This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. <laughs> Hey guys, it is the Awesome Chat. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. I'm ready to talk with some awesome people doing awesome things as we do on this show. You can check out everything, all the past conversations at awesomecast.com. And you can also subscribe to the Awesome Chat on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Play Podcasts, as well as the video versions on AwesomeCast. Uh, uh, Facebook and YouTube page. And if you have anybody you think we should be chatting with here on the show, please hit us up at uh, the Awesome Cast Twitter on the Facebook and Facebook group for Awesome Cast. A lot of great conversations having there. And uh, or, or the email address, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. So, as some know, I'm kind of involved with a certain camp around here called a pod camp, but we're not the only camp in town. And uh, and 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 <coughs> Terry Orlowski is here to tell, talk with us about Ward Camp Pittsburgh. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Hi. It's uh, fun to be here. A little surreal and weird. Fun. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Surreal and weird. <laughs> it, it's the whole microphone, way too much electronic oh, stuff, sort oh. of. That's the surreal part. Which, Other than that, it's just, you know, I'm sitting on the couch yeah, hanging out with some to, friends. It's good times. We try to make it as comfortable as possible, <laughs> right? So, exactly. And just ignore the microphone in front of you and that you're on the TV, <laughs> on the giant 40 inch TV up here. Right. And you're ready to go, right? Well, so. if I ignore the microphone in front of me, I'm much more likely to dump coffee on it or smack don't do it that, so i'm no, gonna no, i'm gonna that, not ignore the microphone no, i'm gonna no. pay attention to where it is so so tell me about word camp so word camp is uh it's a, a one day well in pittsburgh it's a one day conference for all things wordpress um uh wordpress being the awesome word set website content management software uh blogging platform all of the fun things that it can do <clears throat> word camps happen all over the world um, and this is the second year we'll be having a word camp in Pittsburgh. So we're pretty excited about that. And it's, you know, just covers all kinds of topics. It's for everybody from beginners to developers, to people that simply use WordPress as a tool in their business and don't really want to know about the inner workings of it, but want to know how they can better use it to make fun things happen. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about this. Like, of course, you know, I know with us with PodCamp, it's kind of that unconference kind of thing. Now, you guys are a little more stringent on who comes in and talks. There's a little more format to it, right? Um, I mean, there's a little bit more format. We do do some vetting of our speakers. We like to make sure that they uh, do know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, we do ask that our speakers do not turn their session into a, you know, 45 minute promo for their plugin, their development services, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So because WordPress is, um, is GPL licensed and we want to make sure that everything kind of goes along with that. So while, can, can you explain a GPL license for those that don't know GPL? Um, I'm terrible at explaining the legal part of it. <laughs> So, you know, don't quote me on anything. Layman legal. as right. possible. Don't worry about it. it it's they you typically refer to it. Um, oh, gosh. And now I'm forgetting the, the, the quote. But basically, it means that it's free to use. Uh, anybody can use it. Anybody can modify it. But any derivative products made from it have to also be licensed with a GPL, right? So you can't take the WordPress core software that's freely made available to anybody that wants to work with it. Um, and tweak some stuff and then make that a licensed product that people have to buy a license for, like the, that mm -hmm. they would have to purchase a license for. So anything else made that's a derivative of WordPress has to be uh, also free, freely made, freely available to people. Right. But of course, it's a platform that people do make <clears throat> plugins and services and themes and all kinds of things that right. run on top of it. And those have been big business for a lot of people. Right. And the way that those usually work is that you're paying the license fee that you're paying. So for like a premium plugin or a premium theme, the license fee is for the support mm -hmm. and the, and not necessarily for the code. So, um, the code is still GPL. Um, but you know, you, when you pay the licensing fee, you get a designated amount of support, uh, so six months. Typically, it's one year you get support with it. So if you have questions with it or how do I do something or, hey, something broke or, you know, whatever. Kind of like the old, it. like I remember Red Hat Linux kind of operated that way. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, sadly, I haven't dabbled in Linux as mm. much as I like to. Um, 
I, I know that one of them has a cute little penguin. Yes. <laughs> I think that's all of them collectively. But Is yes. it? Yes. Okay. I thought it was a specific flavor of Limix. So but may have, like, maybe maybe it was, if it's a penguin with a hat, that might be a different one. Maybe but that's what it anyways, was. Anyways, that's anyway. out there. So, uh, and it looks like, so is WordCamp officially connected with... Um, WordPress themselves, yes. which the company is Automatic, right? Automatic is the company that um, holds the copyrights and develops um, for WordPress. Mm. Um, and then WordCamp is an official. So to use the WordCamp name, it's copyrighted and all of that stuff. So to be actually called WordCamp, you have to get their blessing. And there's mm. a, a group we call, we affectionately call Central, um, that they handle management of all of the WordCamps, again, all over the world. So there's a bunch happening. There's um, at least at least four or five in Pennsylvania alone in different wow. cities. Um, there's two or three that I know of in Ohio. There's, I mean, locally there's DC, there's Maryland, there's ones in New York. Um, certainly. And you know, if you feel like a mini road trip, you know, go for it. Um, I have a friend that lives in Michigan. I'm considering road tripping to WordCamp Ann Arbor. It's a good excuse to visit my friend. It's only a four hour drive, you know, why not? Um, so there is a central team that manages and kind of approves and gives blessing to the different camps in different cities. Okay. Uh, talk a little bit about, um, you know, using WordPress. You're a WordPress developer yourself, of mm -hmm. course, right? Like, can you talk a little bit about, like, what are your kind of impl uh, implementations of it? What I typically do with WordPress is uh, use it to build websites for small business owners. So people that want the flexibility of being able to go in and adding their own blog posts, changing the page content without having to, you know, get on a developer's to-do list because depending on what a developer has already in, in motion, you know, it could take some time. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you get a great idea for something at two o'clock in the morning and you get up and you're buzzed and you want to just write it without having to wait for somebody else to, to get on that. So it's good for small businesses for that. And what I typically do is uh, give them a custom theme. So theme being the, the look, the template, um, in other words, so that it looks like how they want it to be. It can be branded with their colors and their branding. It doesn't have to look like every other blog website out there or something like that. We can you know, do something really kind of unique with it uh, that fits with how they want it, but still give the familiarity of a back end that's easy to use. And then... Um, you know, because WordPress is so popular, it makes it easy for them to find um, training resources if they have questions, if they have questions and don't want to ask me, but I can't imagine why because I'm fantastic um, and adorable. Um, but, you know, there's there's a big community for it. So there's plenty of ways for them to find resources going forward if something, you know, if they need help with something. Okay. And, and, and this is something, and myself, uh, you know, Full disclosure, I, I use WordPress on a lot of our properties. Like, mm -hmm. I guess I kind of say our internal properties we use them for because it's nice that you can, I have one or two servers mm -hmm. and I can put multiple WordPresses on them and have multiple websites. Mm -hmm. and not big ones, <laughs> no, but <laughs> but when you're starting up like small podcasts and things right. like that, it's kind of the perfect case for something like this. Absolutely. And so many so many um, servers these days, like, you know, your GoDaddies and, and your dream hosts or, or whoever like usually have kind of a one button install and you're, you're you have a website right pretty ready to go right and yeah i mean most of your major um hosting companies support a one-click install mm -hmm. uh something that makes it easy for that uh to, to get it up and running and those are you know if you're looking for maybe i don't want to say budget friendly hosting because they're not always budget friendly. I mean, they're not always like bargain basement cheap, no. but versus a company that does WordPress managed hosting, which you're looking at is going to be a, a higher monthly fee, but they take care of the updates and the backups and the security and stuff like that for you. So there's lots of different ways that you can get started with a WordPress site. Um, and actually we have some sessions coming up at our WordCamp talking about choosing hosting and getting started with WordPress and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if that's something you're thinking about and are curious about, you can learn about it at WordCamp. There you go. Um, from there, back to the event a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, the, you know, tell us a little bit about uh, some of the topics that are going to be covered there. Some points of interest that people should be looking out for. Okay, so I have a list because I can't remember <laughs> it all. So um, for anybody that's watching on the video, pardon the notebook. Um, but we have so we have some sessions that are more aimed at beginners, and this is not necessarily 
all just for people that are brand new to WordPress, but people that um, wouldn't classify themselves as developers. So we'll call them, you know, beginning or intermediate. We definitely have the getting started with WordPress. So if you're new with WordPress and want to get more familiar with how to use it, add themes, um, add plugins, change themes, all that kind of stuff, we're going to cover that. We do have a session on choosing uh, how to choose your hosting for WordPress. We have a WordPress security for beginners a local SEO, and how to create a blogging, blogging schedule in seven steps, which, I mean, as much as I love WordPress, I really think I need to go to that one too because my blogging schedule skills are a little bit shabby. So we were talking a little bit. Like sometimes <laughs> sometimes there's there's more management skills rather than the technical know-how in right. something like a WordPress, right? Like I need to figure out how do I do the, the content more right. than... How does this plugin work? Right. I think a lot of times people might hear it's a conference around WordPress things and they start to think that it's going to be all techie and people talking about code and development. And it's really not. It's it, it Like I said before, it's about all things WordPress. So we're, you know, we have some talks on blogging, like I said, um, people that use WordPress that are just WordPress users, right? So maybe they're managing the blog for their uh, nonprofit or they've got, um, you know, their own small business blog or they're trying to set up an e-commerce store using WordPress. Um, it's not just a bunch of developers and, you know, code geeks running around talking about things in, in foreign languages. Mm -hmm. um, some of the, we do have stuff for developers. Um, some of the topics that are, I, more aimed at developers are things like using Varnish Cache, which is a website caching system that I don't completely know about. So I'm going to be checking in on that one too. Um, JavaScript for WordPress developers, project workflow, learning more about the database, and then even some things about wrestling with um, the internal imposter. Imposter syndrome is rampant in uh, tech world and how to hire and keep remote workers, which even if you're not planning on hiring people, if you want to be hired as a remote worker, I think you should check out that session because you're going to learn what the people that are hiring you are looking for. So it's kind of like a, get, you know, fly on the wall sort of thing. And again, you know, uh, some other concepts just around work. Right, right. Um, you mentioned imposter, imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. I, yeah, what is, what is that? Imposter syndrome, it, it gets talked about a lot in uh, at WordCamps and definitely in the WordPress community, but it's mm. basically that feeling that... Um, and it is more developer related, that feeling that I, you're not good enough, right? That you're this imposter and you're going to get found out for not actually knowing the things that everybody thinks you know or that kind of thing. And it, it's a fairly common syndrome. I, I think other people might in other industries might call it something different. But I mean, right. the concept is, I've is heard pretty the concept. standard. Like, yeah. like, like anybody that goes into kind of an independent work situation. Right. Yeah. Or, or something that's like, this is not a nine to five. This is... You know, you're kind of putting yourself out there. Well, but I mean, even with nine to fives, you know, there's a lot of people that go for looking at uh, developer positions at things. And it's like, you have to know these 16 different languages. And it's right. like, well, I know that one, but only a little, but they're going to find out. And is that good? Or, um, and it, it can apply really, I think, in anything. It's not just developers. It just happens to be most common among developers. So, you know, there's that feeling that you're somehow not, as skilled as you have portrayed yourself and that you're going to get like found out and kicked out or something. Certainly. Um, uh, from there. So, um, anything else around the events you guys are doing, um, um, coming up? Um, well, not really anything else around the event. Um, we do have a, an after party for attendees, so it gives a chance for attendees, you know, another opportunity for them to kind of connect and network with some of the people that you met. You know, you were talking with somebody on that break in between two sessions and you want to continue the conversation or just kind of relax and hang out with everybody. Um, one of the things that's great about WordCamp is it's nice to be around like-minded people, you mm -hmm. know, so you have, I always say it's people that speak my language, right? So uh, it's nice to go to the after parties and continue that conversation. And, and you know, I can't talk about stuff like this with my family because they look at me like I have two heads um, <laughs> or ask entirely too many questions. And then I just, it's, I feel like I'm teaching and not having a family dinner. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice to be able to relax with people like that. Awesome. Um, so how can people get involved? What's come, what, what are the details? How do they get there? Okay. So tickets for WordCamp are a whopping $20. Um, Ooh. we, we are actually, it's one of the rules set by the WordCamp central. We're not allowed to charge more than $20 a day. So the only time it's ever going to be more than 20 is if it's a two day camp. 
Um, so, and the tickets are be able to be so low because of the help from our sponsors. We have some very generous sponsors that help us put it on so we can keep the tickets low so that that, that cost of entry isn't a barrier for anyone that wants to attend. Um, Saturday, September 9th, registration starts at 8 o'clock. It is out at Pittsburgh Technical College um, in Oakdale, uh, if location is important. Um, tickets are $20. We can't really accommodate walk-ins because we do provide lunch. So if you're planning to come, we uh, encourage you to go to the website and get your ticket. Uh, website is pittsburgh.wordcamp.org. Um, pretty easy to pretty easy to get the tickets. It's not a long, complicated process. We'll ask you some information about you. We'll ask you what kind of uh, meal preferences you might have and what size t-shirt you want because everybody gets a t-shirt and lunch when you come to WordCamp. There you go. It's awesome. And that's the, the, you said it's the, the Pittsburgh Technical College out there? Pittsburgh Technical College, yeah. If you haven't been out there, a great facility. I might have worked there for a little bit. <laughs> um, but uh, but no, great great facility out there and doing some really cool stuff. At yeah. least when I, when I was around for it, it was, you know, they were, they were you know, kind of moving forward with a lot of tech things. Yeah. No, they were definitely very... Like other tech schools weren't really doing right they so. were definitely very um enthusiastic and receptive to us having the event having the event out there um the people that i've been working with there have been very helpful mm -hmm. um you don't have to worry about downtown parking. I know parking is going to be fantastic. Like the, I'm a little bit concerned about the whole, you know, if people can't get there, like if people use public transportation, right, you, you can't get out there um, yeah. that early on a Saturday. There's Uber. But parking there's, is amazing there's Uber, out there. There's Uber, there's Lyft, there's so many out there because of the airport. You don't have fine. to pay. You're you don't fine. have to pay for parking. You have yeah. to pay for the ticket. You don't have to pay for parking. Exactly. Making sure that's clear. And a great view from up there as well. Yes. Oh, wait, 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 let's see. Oh, yeah. there's a question. You, you didn't put me on. Hello. So if I wanted to volunteer, are you accepting volunteers? Um, we are nearly full of volunteers because we have a limited number of volunteer spaces. spaces. But um, if you are interested in volunteering, there should still be a volunteer form on the website, I think. Um, I know there was a call for volunteers blog post, but I don't know if it ever actually made it into the navigation. But, okay, and, and, and Sorg's not shaking his head at me okay. um if you want to um hit us up on twitter uh the at wp pgh you can hit it up on twitter and i will um get in touch with you that way and i can you know get you our email address and stuff i don't want to put our email address out for the world i feel like i'm gonna invite spam yeah no that's that's cool I just wanted, <laughs> if, if people want to be involved in some yes. capacity right yeah. and um yeah, so just, you know, reach out and we'll see if there's a way that we can get you involved. And um, all of the sessions are recorded. Um, that's one of the other fun things that I love about WordCamp. So if there's two sessions that are happening concurrently and you can't decide which one you want to go to and you don't have a friend that takes really good notes that you can rely on, uh, all of the sessions are recorded and then we put them up online within a few weeks so you'll be able to catch up with them later. Nice. Excellent. Uh, I'm excited for this, uh, and uh, it's a you know I, I've, I've you know I feel like I'm I'm a WordPress dabbler, and <laughs> and it sounds like the kind of thing that even if I I, I think I have I have another event that day, mm -hmm. but I would definitely be checking out sharing the videos at the very least and some yes. of the uh, interesting topics. So I know that's awesome. last year we did have uh, somebody. Um, from Libsyn, actually, we gave a, a mm -hmm. presentation on podcasting. So we didn't have anybody submit uh, a topic on podcasting this year. But maybe I'll have to remind you next year if you mm -hmm. want to talk about podcasting. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm not a pod press <laughs> or anything like that kind of expert. But, no. Uh, well, but see, that's the thing is that you're not supposed to talk about a product or a paid true. service. Is, you're talking service, yeah. more about how to podcast with WordPress and not a specific um, you know, service or anything like that. So you, what you know is actually perfect for the kind of topic that WordCamps are looking for. Okay. Yeah. A little more like this is I'll, how you post, this is how you deal with it. I'll be submitting that on our behalf next year. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remind you. There you go. There we go. I'll get the, I'll get the message. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Everybody, please check it out. Check, uh, check out WordCamp. Or if you're not in the Pittsburgh area, find a WordCamp near you. Absolutely. Or if you can't make this one, find one in driving distance, like, like the ones you mentioned before yeah. as well. Because, I mean, it's always great to get in, in other circles of people and other regions. Look, last too. weekend, or well, not last weekend, two weeks ago, um, I drove out to WordCamp Lehigh Valley in Bethlehem, Allentown area with a friend of mm -hmm. mine. So it was, you know, five hour drive to go to a WordCamp, but it's totally worth it. You meet people, you hear different topics, you, it, it, it's just, it's a good thing. 
Excellent. Check it out. WordCamp Pittsburgh coming up here. Uh, thank you so much, my guest, Terry, joining thank you. us here. Um, and of course, checking out everything there and all the rest of the interviews over at awesomecast.com and on all of our, uh, uh, wherever you can subscribe to the show. I uh, mentioned at the top of the show. Thank you to my awesome guest. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.